Hi, guys. Hello, hello, hello. I uh, just wanted to show to you one case, just one case I was seeing, I was seeing today in my office. And it's important for me to show this because it like um, uh, shows the importance of understanding the way we deal with loops and with the treatment plan in orthodontics. Treatment planning, before treatment planning, diagnosis, treatment planning, and dealing with the biomechanics. So this is what I'm going to show to you. It looks like a simple case here. As you can see, we have uh, this space being closed. The third molar, the upper third, the upper right third molar was misalized with the loop, but it's just part of the, the problem here. Just part of the, the treatment that we were, we were doing this patient. Let me just show it to you now. Okay, here it is. I'd like to call your attention to this case here. Then we have what I want to show to you. Okay, so what we have here, this class two, and this compensation that we have in this class two division two with anterior segment, upper anterior segment retruded, uh, this uh, negative inclination of the incisor, upper incisors, and the extreme negative inclination of posterior also, because we have this posterior, pos posterior position of the mandible, and we have this compensation of the maxilla to this posterior position of the mandible. The mandibular, mandibular arch was posterior, was forward uh, in relation to the maxilla, so we had maxilla had to compensate that with the inclination, okay? So we have it here. And now since the beginning, we do this to try to decompensate the problem by advancing onto your teeth and posterior teeth. In this case, since the beginning, since the day one, I bought the, the bracket, upper bracket. And since the first day, I was trying to do the protrusion using for that what we call this, uh, long, long stops. So we want to protrude anterior teeth uh, by these stops. And as you can see here, we have this deflection of the arch wire, meaning we have this uh, protrusive component of this arch being compressed with the stop, okay? And then we go on, as you can see, after a while, we have a good inclination of posterior teeth. And for that, we see that in this posterior area here, we have bone available to do this kind of buccal inclination. Otherwise, we couldn't do that because if we didn't have this amount of bone positioned here, this amount of bone in the posterior segment, we couldn't do this kind of protrusion because in such case, if we did that without bone, we would have this recession, bone recession, okay? So in this case, protrusion and buccal inclination of posterior teeth, buccal inclination of anterior teeth, and we go on with the decompensation. As you can see here, we have a good protrusion at this moment, opening space here, distal to the lateral incisor, and I understood that in this moment, I should have to do something different for the curve of speed. And I used here this three-piece approach to do with this uh, cantilever to do the intrusion of anterior teeth without protruding it, trying to avoid the protrusion. So I used this. And here we have it. And after a while, everything was set for the surgery. And we have here the hooks that we put I use usually seven hooks for that in between central incisor, mesial and distal to the canine and mesial to the first molar. So this is what we use uh, and our surgeons, they agree with this positioning of those hooks. And after surgery, and this is the case as I saw it today, okay? <coughs> this is the case in the final step of a refinement. Here we have a class one and the left, the, the, right side but not the class one very good class one in their left side so patients were in less class two elastic and this side and this side is she's used she's wearing a class one elastic meaning uh triangular elastic and now we're closing the space of that third the second wall missing molar upper right second missing molar using the third molar being mesialized for that. 
And I used for that a, a loop. So what I want to call your attention about in this case is this, that when we do the right treatment planning, right diagnosis, when we address patients chief compliant and we do the treatment based on that and we do everything and before, before starting everything, we do this treatment planning and we stick to it, it's very good and very fast. So in my opinion, and I always say that what speeds up the mechanics is not the magic of the vibration and anything is biomechanics associated with a good treatment planning and good diagnosis. Of course, the, uh, the, 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 the diagnosis comes first, always. And then we go with the treatment planning and then we need to understand the biomechanics and understand the side effects that we have in our, in our treatment and try to avoid them or try to anticipate those side effects using some kind of mechanics to avoid them or to eliminate or at least to decrease this, those side effects, those bad side effects. Because sometimes we have good side effects that we can allow them to, to happen, okay? In this case, class two. So after uh, some months, we have now the inclination being uh, addressed with torques and the curve of speed here is still deep. So we needed to level the curve of speed and have, and we had these two segments of the lower anterior and lower posterior were in different positions and in different heights. So we tried to deal with that with this segmented approach using this posterior region. And here we have the cantilever which was going to verticalize to upright posterior segment and extrude posterior segment and at the same time intrude anterior segment. Look at this here. Today we put this, this arch, this segmented arch, and here we have also a segmented approach using this loop for mesializing this molar, using for that the moment of the couple to try to do this vertical this translation during the movement. Of course, it's not possible to do a, a pure translation during the movement, but we deal with that. We understand that we can deal with that, loosening, the, first of all, having this inclination, tipping of the, the crown, and then we don't do the activation of the loop and we wait till the moment of the couple, moment of this band here, uh, to, do, do, to do its job, meaning it goes to upright posterior teeth. In this case, just one molar. So this is what we do. So as you can see, uh, two months, I think one or two months later, I think it's just one month. We have now this intrusion of posterior anterior segment and extrusion of posterior and this combination. And we still have the loop here doing its job, uh, visualization and waiting to have the, the upriding of this motor. So patient ready for surgery. Now for keeping the anterior segment down, we do this step bend here, just a passive step bend here to keep the position of anterior teeth. And then we go on after surgery, we are now like uh, four months, if I'm not mistaken, after surgery. And we are dealing with those space and two space because we have here this tooth size discrepancy. So we're opening the space for increasing the size of those lateral. And here we have the band. Uh, unfortunately, this patient could op can open her mouth wide enough to have better photographs of this position. But we have here this step by step during the mesialization of posterior and comparing this before and during the mesialization of posterior. And we have here the space being closed. So this is today. As you can see here, I have those two spaces, space and distal to the lateral and both sides because we have, both sides because we have, uh, we have these two discrepancies. Those lateral incisors are not compatible to the size of the central, or the size of the central incisor. So we're keeping this space open to have them uh, 
uh, augmented, increased in size, okay? So those are other photographs. This photograph is very beautiful because you can see the shape of the upper arch, which was in this case, compatible to the position of the mandible, distalized mandible. So it was a compensation of the upper arch, the posterior position of the mandible in the sagittal aspect. And here we have it uh, after the surgery, okay? And we have a good compat comp uh, compatibility <laughs> between upper and lower. Here we have uh, before treatment, the space here, and during treatment after that. As you can see, we have here posterior, the, the molar, the third molar going forward. But of course, it's not a very precise translation because we have, especially in this kind of case, in which we have this cortical plate here, very thick cortical plate, avoiding the movement of the root. So we need to, to, keep, uh, to, to keep enough, enough time, enough um, amount of time to have the upriding of the, this, this root, okay? Because we have to remove all this bone here and to do the relocation of the, 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 the root with this uh, very, very difficult positioning of the root because of the cortical plate. Okay, so going on, we see that in this phase of the treatment in which we were using this approach to do the leveling of the curve of speed using this three, piece, uh, three, three pieces arch for doing this leveling of the curve of speed. And now we have it today. Okay, so this is the x-ray that we did today, meaning now we are just comparing after surgery. Actually, this is not my request. I didn't request this photograph and this x-ray. Now this is for, from the surgeon, from the surgeon part. So now we are just dealing with the upriding of this root here. Why is that? Because after closing the space, we still have here the moment of the couple acting in this molar to do the upriding of this molar, and it's going to happen in a few uh, more months. So we are now 16 months after uh, initiating the treatment, and we hope uh, to finish this treatment in uh, another one or two months, okay? So this is what I was trying to show to you, the pre- and trans treatment and after treatment, a surgical case with all those difficulties of surgical cases like that, like this. And uh, we have here the possibility of finishing it uh, in one year and a half, which is very good, which is very good for a surgical case in which we had to close the space, mesializing the third molar to occupy to fill the space of a second molar. So I, for me, it's a very good treatment. I am very, very um, happy with this outcome that we have in this moment. And I hope to show it to you in two, one or two more months, the final result with the veneers and everything and the smile, okay? But for you to keep in mind, mechanics, biomechanics, orthodontics is very important. But before that, we need to deal with the most important thing, which is diagnosis. And second most important thing, treatment planning, okay? After that, we need to understand the biomechanics and deal with biomechanics to fasten, to speed up the mechanics itself, okay? So very good to talk to you guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.